Hey, are you ready for some hunting on the Tommy Wilcox Show? Tommy Wilcox Outdoors is brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. Feel good about your money. Mahindra Tractors, built for the long haul. Peach Outdoors, get the motor running on your next project with our Mahindra Tractors, ATVs, and lawn equipment. Tuscaloosa Toyota, one price, one place. Top Shot Deer and Turkey Mix from Faithway Alliance. The band Legal Limit. Lou and the guys play all your favorite classic rock and country. Nelson Glass for all your contract or residential glass needs. All music courtesy of country music legend Hank Williams Jr. Hey folks, welcome to today's show. We got a special show today. Uh, I know I got a lot of friends and family out there that are Alabama fans, and uh, I'm gonna have Bill Searcy with me today. And <laughs> Bill was a teammate and a good friend. And man, glad to have you on this hunt today. Man, we're glad to be down here. The weather stopped stopped raining for us right on Supposed time. To be, yeah, it's not too cold, but cold enough. And, uh, <laughs> my first first time this year being able to hunt so i appreciate it man. you're welcome we'll be down at swamp white tails in brent alabama yes sir uh let's just talk a little bit about what you've been through uh, <laughs> uh i hate to bring up memories but uh <laughs> but it, bill's been a teammate and he's been going through a lot of problems here in the last two years has it been yeah, two. once he got his cancer diagnosis of pancreatic cancer and then you had a few other problems. So let's just talk yeah. about that real quick. Well, in, in 2018, actually, uh, at our 40th reunion of the 78 championship team, the day after that, I got a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, yeah. uh, which used to be a death sentence. Yeah. Uh, but uh, nowadays it's changed a little bit, and the treatments have improved, thank God. And, and uh, God so uh, saw forth to, to bring me through all of that. And, we went through uh, months and months of chemotherapy and then uh, surgery and then radiation. And as of last, uh, about September, October, they pronounced me cancer free, uh, which I told them we'd get there. I just didn't know exactly when. Yeah. Uh, and then things were going along pretty smoothly. And then in April of, uh, of this year of 20, of course, we had the COVID thing going on. And right when that started, I had a, a, a seizure uh, which I never had before, and uh, included during that seizure, I had a couple, they're not really sure how many, two or three little mini strokes. And I broke, uh, I fell and broke both hips and fractured both pelvises. And, uh, and then so obviously rushed to the hospital, served some surgeries. And then shortly after that, while I was in rehab, uh, fell and broke my right femur. Um, <laughs> and uh, snapped my thigh bone in, in half. And so we've been basically spent since last April 11th uh, surgeries and trying to learn how to walk again and, and uh, made a lot of progress and uh, hopefully we'll be, uh, this time next year we'll be walking normal again and out yeah. of wheelchairs and walkers and all that. But, but you know, uh, you can either choose to feel sorry for yourself or you can choose to use it as a learning experience. And I just, yeah. I, believe that, I believe that God put me in this position, not only to learn, but to hopefully influence in a positive way other people. Yeah. And uh, just being able to get out today and get out of the house and get in the outdoors and uh, just be with you guys and be with friends and family. My son Woody's here with me today, yeah, Woody's which is always special. And uh, that's my that's my lookout. So if yeah. I'm taking a nap, he'll just wake me up when the deer come. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> anyway, so that's what's been going been on. A just a track, lot of medical yeah. stuff, you know. And I asked Billy. I, I called him to check on because Rich told me you had fell and yeah. I, I knew about your hips, but I didn't know you had fell again <laughs> and broke your femur. And yeah. I was like, I need to call him and see if there's anything I can do. And you know, you said prayers and all, but yeah. You know, you said, you know, I've never taken a real nice deer before, and I'd sure like to maybe go hunt and let my son come along. And yep. Through the Alabama family and a lot of people that uh, knew of you and, and, and consider you your fr a friend and a family member, yeah. uh, we all got together and 
kind of put this thing together for you and Mark's Outdoors. Yep. We want to thank you guys thank you, Mark. for the hat and the, the beautiful cool. uh, jacket. And we got Toby in Centerville who's going to mount. If, right. you, if, you, if you're able to take a nice deer today, he'll mount it. And then, of course, we've got Swamp Whitetails here that's allowing us to do all this stuff yeah. here. Casey and those guys do a great job. So we're going to film it for Tommy Wilcox Outdoors and uh, get Woody in it and <laughs> so that uh, hopefully you'll have something you can watch for a good while. Oh, I know. think so. You and I did a fishing segment several years ago, and that was a great, that was great fun. And this will be the same. And I want to thank everybody, too, that uh, has contributed to this happening today. Uh, Swamp Whitetails, Alabama Credit Union, Mark's Outdoors for the for the coat, yeah. uh, keep me warm today, and uh, and everybody else involved because I know I'm missing a lot of people. Yeah. But uh, and of course Tommy Wilcox outdoors for, for bringing me out. It's a it's whether or not you'll ever know it. It's a it's a special day, and uh, anytime I get to spend it with once again with teammates and family, and uh, just to do something fun after the last year or so, it's been a, it'll be a good time. Okay. Well, and let yeah. me give you something. Uh, I don't have a nice coat to give you, but I want. <laughs> I want to give you a hat for my company, uh, Relodyne Corporation, which yeah. we're in the lubricant business. And, uh, and tell them a little bit. They, they've sure. been really good to you, too. Oh, absolutely. They, Relodyne has stood by me for two solid years as I've gone through all these medical issues and all this trauma and uh, long periods of time without being able to work other than at home on a computer or on my cell phone. They stood right by my side. And every time I apologize, they just keep saying just, you know, get well, everything will be fine. Get well, everything will be fine. So they, they've kept pressure off of me in that regard, and uh, they've treated me just great. And yeah. I can't, can't say enough about the people that I work for. And, uh, you know, give me a call if you need anything <laughs> uh, in the way of lubrication or fuels and services uh, for, your, for your industrial uses. And uh, just give me a call at uh, my cell phone, which is, Three three four five nine five one six four two. There you go, and, man. And uh, just give me a holler. But thanks again, everybody, for contributing to this day. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. I want to, when we come back, just let Bill tell you a little bit about his book that he wrote. You get it at uh, on Amazon, and uh, then we're going to head out to the hunt. So uh, stay with us, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, Bill, hope this jacket keeps you warm on your hunt, man. Good luck from Mark's Outdoors. Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. Got Bill Searcy with me, former Alabama player. A little time in the USFL and NFL. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, whitetail deer hunt up at Swamp Whitetails in Brent, Alabama. And, uh, Bill, a lot of people uh, go through hard times. You, you put out a book. How long ago is that? Been? Oh, it's, uh, about six years now. Five six, or six years, years now. Ago. And I know you've uh, spoke at a lot of FCA banquets or a lot of business functions yeah. because your story is is just a heck of a story. It's kind of a been on top of the world, you know, and yeah. you've been at the. Can you just tell our viewers a little bit about sure. your book and then where they can get it? Yeah. First off, you uh, the name of the book is High Tide. A story of football, free fall, and forgiveness. Uh, the, the title tells you pretty much everything you, you want to know. It's available at Amazon Books uh, in paperback or the Kindle version, the electronic version. And what the book's about is, uh, you know, basically it's, it's my life, but it's, it's, you know, where I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, and, you know, wanting to be a football player my whole life, like a lot of us. And, wanting to play at a major university, which I was blessed to have done at the University of Alabama. Uh, and then obviously, like a lot of us, wanting to go and play after college and, and being able to do that. But then uh, it's more so about a guy that made a bunch of really bad decisions uh, after college, uh, chose to be with the wrong people, make, do the wrong things, and uh, got uh, lost everything. Um, through addiction of, in drugs and alcohol, uh, but then uh, at some point in time decided to start take, making the right decisions 
and, and following God and, and following Jesus' word and uh, what that has done for me as far as straightening my life out and, and getting back together with my family that I was separated apart, getting back to with my good friends that I was separated apart. Uh, homeless in Birmingham for a couple of years and uh, living in a car and then living in the streets and just crazy stuff. But that's all in the book. Uh, it has a good ending, believe me, I know what the ending is. <laughs> and uh, so uh, do, do, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, and get you a copy of High Tide. Uh, it'd be a good Christmas present. You still got time to do that. And it's, uh, I think they're eleven ninety five at Amazon right now. So um, not very expensive, but uh, that's, that's what basically what the book's about. Good, man. Y'all need to get it. Uh, like I said, I've done a show before with Bill, and a lot of people that did get the book made their kids read it and uh, friends kids read it so that you don't have to make the mistakes that Bill <laughs> said he yeah. made you know so uh, cut out that the bad part and yeah. just stick to the cut out the middle man let yeah. me I've already done all that for you <laughs> <laughs> alright well today we're going to head out Bill and uh, get you in the stand my friend good. and uh, hopefully uh, you've been seeing a few good deer yeah and uh, they've been hitting the fields pretty regular. Hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we'll put you on the deer of a I hope lifetime. We, I hope we get a picture of a big one going down. <laughs> That's all I know. So we're gonna we're gonna tell a, a little Bear Bryant story, or Coach Bryant story, I should say. Uh, around about, I think it was the summer of 1980, which means I was going into my senior year of uh, football. Um, we had come out of spring practice and uh, I'd had a real good spring and winter workout and was feeling pretty good about myself and uh, pretty cocky. And uh, so I was in summer school. Uh, most summers I had to go to summer school to get enough hours to be eligible to play ball. And uh, unfortunately, I was not a, a good student, uh, only because I didn't try very hard, I guess. But, but anyway, I was in summer school and taking a couple classes. And I have to tell you that before or after this incident that we're going to talk about, I had never seen Coach Bryant above the first floor of Bryant Hall. Now, he ate with us during football season every night. Saw him all the time on the bottom floor, uh, but never above the bottom floor. And so uh, we were in the middle of summer, it was about July, and I had a class probably at eight or nine in the morning uh, that I was not in. And I had been out the night before enjoying some of the festivities in Tuscaloosa on University Boulevard and uh, a little bit too much and decided, I guess at some point, that I wasn't going to class that day. So I was asleep in my room in Bryant Hall and uh, there came a big banging on my door and I just laid there for a while and didn't say anything. And then finally I started screaming at the door and I said, uh, whoever it is better go away. So they... A little bit louder. And I was screaming at the door, cussing at the door, threatening whoever was at the door. This went on for three or four minutes and it, the banging just kept getting louder, but whoever was there would never say anything. So I said, if I get up out of this bed, I'm getting ready to come whip somebody. And so no response. So I said, I'm coming. So I jump up out of bed, yank the blankets back, butt naked, walk to the door and uh, yank the door open. And I'm looking down at the ground when I yank it open and I see the tips of these two shoes that I recognize really well. <laughs> and I realized what I was looking at was Coach Bryant was standing in my doorway and I, I just kind of slowly looked up to his face and I'm standing there naked. I said, oh, hey, coach. And he said, I don't mind it. What a thing to see without a gun. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, and he said, uh, aren't you supposed to be in class right now? He had a little crumple up piece of paper. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, I suggest you get your big A to class. And uh, when you, after you finish with that class, you come see me and, uh, over at the Coliseum. And so I did as I was told and uh, showed up over at the Coliseum and he looked up and saw me standing at his door. He said, go get your gear on, your running gear. Go on down and start running. And I'll come and get you later. And it was, like I said, it was the middle of July and it was probably 100, one of those 100 degree days. And 
I just went down there and started running. Now, I never even looked up because I knew I was going to be there for a while. And uh, he eventually came to the top of the tunnel that came from under the under the road. And he was standing when he saw me, got my attention, and gave me the, the wrap it up sign. And uh, I never heard about it again, but uh, I didn't miss any more summer classes either. So Coach Bryant and I had lots of encounters like those, but that was probably not funny at the time. But now, now it's funny and uh, – and I've told that story a lot, and it's one of my favorites to, to think about and to tell. But he, uh, that was the only time I ever saw him uh, above the ground floor, so I might have been the reason for that. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, roll tide. I think we got him? Yeah, you got him. You hit him. I could look like it went. You hit him back a little bit. But I had him because I was right on my shot yesterday. Yeah. I pulled it back a couple inches to the left, thinking, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he yelled, hey, and he stopped just for long enough for me to put him right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's a good deer. That's a beautiful deer. Yeah. When you said I couldn't see him for a second, but I saw and when you told me about that down tree, I could see the tip yeah. coming through, and then that rack was pretty wide, you know, pretty spread out. Yeah. If there'd have been two, I could have got two, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I knew it wouldn't go. take long for the truth yeah, of the story. I gotta say something stupid, you know that. If I got them, if I got that one, I'd be extremely excited, and I'm extremely excited. No, you hit him. You hit him and just back a little bit, but he's. He didn't run off real fast. All right, folks, here it is, Billy. <laughs> That's what we're here for, right there. Right there, man. Twist his horns a little bit. How about that? How about that? How about that? There you go. How about that right there? That's what there. I'm talking about. That's what, we, that's what we came for. What we came for. That's your biggest deal, man. That's it. That's my biggest one right there. And that's what you wanted, ain't it? Yep. And that's what you got. Special, <laughs> special day with a special deer and a bunch of special people, man. Don't get, no better, Don't get no better, man. Don't get no better. Man, congratulations. Thank you, brother. Thank you for making all this happen, too. And you're welcome. And there's a lot of people. We want to thank Mark's Outdoors. Yes, sir. Jacket, hat. We want to thank all the Alabama players. I've got family. Uh, we've got uh, people at the Swamp. That I mean, he. I mean, thank Casey, you, man, he. He uh, scouted them and kind of knew yeah. where they were and all that kind of stuff. And uh, 
there's a lot of people to thank, but more than anything, thank God you're still here. Yes, sir. Still alive and still kicking, baby. And still kicking, yep. and hopefully, uh, next we, time out of the wheelchair. Out of the wheelchair. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Casey. We yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you, Casey. Woody, I'm glad you got to. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Glad you got to do it. If y'all get a chance, y'all come see Casey and him at the swamp and get you one of these big boys. There you go. Gassed up, loaded down, trucking on from town to town. Guns, bows, and a tackle box. Here come Tommy Wilcox. Hitting the water, hitting the woods. That Bama boy sure got it good. Always having too much fun, Lord, it does.